Good day, everyone. This is Chris with the Ancient Scholar. Hope you guys are all doing well. I'm on my uh, daily commute to work, and I thought I'd uh, start on a topic that has generated, uh, that actually several people have asked me uh, questions about this topic, or perhaps covering this topic. This is going to be part one in a series of videos on this particular topic. The topic I'll be covering is uh, something known as APRV, or Airway Pressure Release Ventilation. APRV is a, we call a specialty mode of ventilation. Uh, it is a lung protective uh, strategy, and it is used when more traditional or conventional modes and types of ventilation fail to adequately um, oxygenate our patients. Okay. Now, with that said, um, because I'm talking about exotic forms of ventilation, uh, when we look at one of the primary conditions that APRV is used for, that is um, ARDS, Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome, it should be noted that um, when we look at uh, overall mortality rates, um, patients surviving ARDS, uh, the single most important thing or single most important theme that continues to uh, come up is... Um, limiting the, uh, the volume that we're administering uh, to the patients and, you know, limiting airway pressure. So with that said, um, really what seems to uh, quantitatively and statistically improve mortality in patients with um, ARDS um, it is not the fact that we use specialty modes, but it's more that are we using appropriate tidal volumes and are we um, preventing uh, barrow and volume traumas from occurring? Um, so using lung protective tidal volumes uh, or low tidal volumes tends to um, increase overall mortality and not necessarily these exotic modes of ventilation. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, APRV. What is it? It's a airway pressure release ventilation. And APRV is, is basically a mode of ventilation where I have two levels of CPAP or PEEP. Um, I have a PEEP, uh, CPAP or PEEP high, a pressure high, and a pressure low. Um, and um, I typically spend most of my time at the high pressure, and I have very quick periodic releases of that pressure to allow for uh, some uh, carbon dioxide removal to occur. And that's really what APRV is, is um, I set a high pressure, I set a low pressure, set a high time and a low time, and um, I spend most of my time at the high pressure with uh, periodic releases of that pressure to allow for CO2 removal. Should be noted that for optimal uh, APRV to work, really need to have a spontaneously breathing patient and APRV is typically set up to where a patient can breathe spontaneously at pressure high or pressure low. Okay, so you really opt ideally want a spontaneously breathing patient for APRV to be uh, particularly effective. Okay, so what does APRV do? Well, it, uh, it does a couple of things, but really what it does is it promotes recruitment of collapsed alveoli. Um, with uh, quick periodic pressure releases. So I recruit cla collapsed alveoli, I increase oxygenation, um, I can prevent barrow and volume traumas, um, hopefully uh, mitigate uh, the negative hemodynamics quelli uh, pre that, uh, that can be appreciated with um, high pressures in the airways. Um, I can improve uh, VQ mismatch and shunting as well. So, uh, what are the indications for APRV? Well, basically, uh, we use APRV on patients that have refractory hypoxemia. Um, typical patients include patients that have uh, severe, um, severe problems with lung compliance. Uh, typically, they'll have a very low PF ratio. They will not have uh, left ventricular failure. They'll have refractory uh, hypoxemia. They'll have bilateral ground glass infiltrates on the x-ray. So all the kind of the cardinal findings for um, ARDS, adult respiratory distress syndrome. Uh, so the advantages, it can improve oxygenation. Um, it can prevent uh, barrow and volume traumas and hopefully prevent hemo negative hemodynamic sequelae or consequences. Uh, some of the disadvantages, um, 
carbon dioxide uh, elimination can be a problem, particularly if I have a patient that's not spontaneously breathing or not um, breathing all that 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 well. Um, I can have uh, carbon dioxide buildup, um, which can lead to respiratory acidosis and all the problems associated with acidosis. Um, so optimally, you do want to have a patient that is spontaneously breathing if you're going to, to uh, institute, put them in uh, adult uh, APRV ventilation. Uh, another problem you can run into with APRV is um, patients that have obstructive lung pathology, such as uh, asthma uh, and all the various forms of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, I can have increased airway resistance that occurs with APRV ventilation, and I can um, further lead to inc- uh, inability to eliminate carbon dioxide, and, uh, profound respiratory acidosis. Okay, so uh, the basic settings of APRV, well, I have a pressure high, pressure low, a time high, and a time low. Typically, I start my pressure high at uh, the patient's plateau pressure if, uh, it, when they're in volume control ventilation. If their plateau pressure is above 30 to 35, you'll typically look at starting at about 30 on your pressure high. Your pressure low, you're going to want to set between 0 and 1 centimeters of water. You really want that to be extremely low. Um, because when you have that pressure release, you want to be able to eliminate as much carbon dioxide as you can in a short amount of time, and you want to decrease the amount of airway resistance that is experienced during exhalation. Um, the time high is typically going to be set very long. This is, a, again, a very exotic mode of ventilation. Uh, anywhere from at least four seconds all the way to seven or eight seconds. Um, Per breathing cycle, okay. Um, so they'll spend four to four to eight seconds at pressure high, and then pressure low, generally 0.5 to 0.7 or 0.8 seconds. Okay, a very short release time. So you're going to spend uh, four to seven seconds at pressure high. It's going to release for about half a second to pressure low, and then boom, back right back up again at pressure high. So you can see just how important it is to have a patient that's uh, spontaneously breathing for APRV to be an effective strategy and able to effectively um, allow that patient to ventilate um, carbon dioxide. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. Hopefully you found this um, interesting and enlightening. And as always, thanks for hanging in there.